Oh no. I'm wearing I'm wearing my good jeans. Don't tell Cass, okay? I should probably switch those out. Hey guys, so we're gonna get into this new hoist here. We're gonna tell you all the dimensions, lift, and capacities, all the features, everything you need to know about it while we do a little bit of maintenance. I gotta pull a renegade up onto here because apparently the sled season not only isn't great, it just never happened. So uh, we're done with the sleds. It's just not gonna happen this year. We're gonna get that renegade dialed in, do a little bit of maintenance, and what better way to show off the hoist than to actually do something with it. So I think that's the game plan. So what I'm gonna do is pull that up and we'll get to uh, chatting about some of the specifics on this hoist. Some of the things you're gonna need to know, installation, super easy. You just need to make sure you have a decent concrete pad in your garage. Your standard four inch pad is perfectly acceptable for this application. This hoist lifts 2,200 pounds before it actually caps off. Uh, I haven't actually tested this, but I'm sure there's a hydraulic bypass at 2,200 pounds, so it's well aware. Very capable table hoist. The unique thing about this is there's very few 2,200 pound capacity table hoists at this size. So to give you an idea, it is 65 inches in width on the table and the actual table portion in length is about 89 inches, oh, yeah, 88 and a half inches. So that's the actual table portion. The full length when this is dropped all the way to the ground with the ramps all the way to the end is 122 inches to give you an idea of how big this is going to be when it takes up space in your shop. One of the great bits of advice I got when we were installing this. Beforehand, the owner told me to basically tape out those dimensions on the floor and just try operating in your shop, you know, around that taped out section. So you can get a feel for where this thing needs to be. And that was actually really great advice. It let me know that there's gonna be ample room to put machines on this however I have to and work around it and open drawers, toolboxes, roll things around, that kind of thing. So that was a great bit of advice. So those are the dimensions. Obviously, when you take off these side extensions and the bars that hold them in, which is very easy, um, this main center section is 31 and a half inches. And that's relevant for you motorcycle guys who might want to only use the center bit, or maybe guys who want to lift a UTV, you can use the center portion and put jacks and basically lift your whole side by side with the suspension drooping down, which is my plan as well. I have a few things before I actually attempt that. I have to find some jacks appropriate for that application, but that's kind of the idea with that. You're going to see some rods at the front and those just slide in. Um, and what these do is just let you know when the tire is going to hit the end. So they just come out. That's all that is there. I have them in just because I don't know where I want to put them yet. That'll give you an idea there. So that's kind of the dimensions. The main plate underneath is a bit smaller, but it has stabilizing bars on the outside. And then you have 110 power that actually goes to the wall, 120 volt. Let's be real, 110 didn't exist for like 75 years or something like that. So uh, that's what's going on down there. This is electric over hydraulic. So you're gonna see a controller here. Pretty simple, you have a safety switch lockout. Can't do anything when that's locked out. Otherwise, go up until you hear the locks. There's the locks and then you set it down on the locks. And that's it. You can't go down from here because it's sitting on the locks. So when you want to go down, you have to go up a bit. And then go past. Sorry, I almost hit the wrong button there. So now it goes past the locks and it'll go all the way basically to the floor. It doesn't take very long, especially going down. Obviously, if you have some weight, this can uh, be expediated a little bit and it will slow down a little bit, I'm sure, when I put some weight on it. When it is on the ground though, I'm gonna get a measurement from the ground to the top of the table. You're gonna see the ramps sliding out there. So from the ground to the top, seven inches. Not much to it. It's really not in the way. Um, <laughs> this can be used, basically the only limitation is the 2200 pounds, the physical size and your imagination. You could put lawn mowers, you want to work on you know, like your lawn mower deck or you want to take your ATV, your side by side, your motorcycle, just about anything obviously you can work on these. That's why they're so great. I can't put pole hoists in here 
because they would just be in the way of either a door or like where my toolbox goes. It just didn't make a lot of sense in this space. And because I work on you know, this kind of size of unit, an ATV, a side-by-side -side -side or a sled, this was just the perfect answer for me. So for full transparency, the auto loft, they sponsored the channel, so they gave me this unit for free, but they never told me what to say. They just said, here's a unit, you know, make use of it, show people what it's all about. And I think that's perfect because when we were talking, there's very few options for, you know, Joe Blow Power Sport guys, you know. Of course we can go and get a two post, four post, whatever. The auto loft has all of those as well. But I think this is the perfect solution for, you know, the, the double bay garage with the wife on one side and you've got a little space. This is kind of perfect for us, you know what I mean? I think it's gonna suit the application for me and I'm gonna show you how I'm going to use it and hopefully it kind of gives you an idea of how it could be useful for you guys as well. And if you have any questions, please leave them down below. There's gonna be a few more details, but I'm gonna show you when I actually pull the Renegade up on to the uh, hoist here. So yeah, just leave them down below. I'll make sure to answer them for you. So there's the Renegade up on the hoist. To give you an idea, this Renegade is probably a little over a thousand pounds. If I were to make an educated guess, about a thousand fifty. So you can tell that this hoist handles it no issue. Quite literally doesn't make a difference as far as raising and lowering time. It's also about 50 inches wide. You can see it kind of resting exactly on those extensions. So if you cribbed a standard ATV underneath on the belly plates, you could easily also drop the side extensions and just have the suspension hanging over the edges, no issue. Similar to the way I'm going to do the side-by-side. -side. The fitment's pretty great. So this will allow me to do all of my work. No questions asked, pretty simple. One thing to note here, the ramps obviously go up with the machine, but that center ramp doesn't. What happens here is the higher you go, this center ramp actually tucks in underneath, which is super great. I was concerned that those ramps were gonna go up and that was gonna be a tripping hazard, but no, it actually tucks inside really nice. I'll show you. This is actually pretty neat. I didn't even know it did this until it was installed the other day. As you can see, the more I raise it up, it's actually tucking that full ramp in. Because like I said, if that stayed where it was and these ramps went up, that would just end up being a tripping hazard out here when you're coming around, so. Probably be careful. I think this is the highest I'm gonna wanna go, really. So there's the maximum height with a thousand pounds on it. It's sturdy, it's not going anywhere. And obviously everything is out of the way. So if you wanted to drop oils or whatever you wanted to do, everything is quite reachable, which brings me to my next point. So you're gonna see a few extra features here if you have a keen eye. And one of them is this drop plate. So you literally just pull it out, drop it down. Few things with this, if you were to say have a motorcycle on this center portion, this would allow you to actually remove a tire. For my application, although I do have motorcycles and dirt bikes here too, this is going to be more used for diff work. So if I know I have a front diff issue or a rear diff issue, I'm just gonna park appropriately because there isn't one of these at the front end. The reason for that is on the front, you can actually get a bracket to hold motorcycles standing up. So you're gonna see some holes in the front there. But yeah, for me, this is going to be for diff work, axle work, whatever, anything at the back, which I'm actually gonna be doing a little bit of today. So it doesn't just stop there. We actually have another one on the side here. And this allows us to get closer on the inside so these extensions don't get in the way for these smaller applications. For my side-by-side, -side, it's already gonna be out here and I can reach in and if I need more room, I still can, of course. But this allows me to get right close. I am currently reaching almost to the other side of the midsection of this. So from either side, I can definitely access anything I need to access. So this was another smart move on their part. Uh, big fan of this. Big heavy duty pins, 
are what hold that up. So make sure you actually put those back because if you don't, you're gonna have a heck of a ride on the way down with your ATV. So there it is, nice and solid. So one of the things that you're probably wondering is how you actually get the work done on a table hoist. Assuming you haven't seen one of these used before or have any experience with hoists. Well, one of the ways you'll see in a lot of different jack applications or hoist applications is you're gonna have like scissor jacks or different jacks built in and different ways of lifting from the inside. Um, so table hoists obviously don't have that but what you do is you get a scissor jack or something like that. You can use a standard jack as well. I haven't ordered scissor jacks yet because I'm looking kind of for the right one. I'm a sucker for red. I don't know. So I'm going to get this up there and I'll just jack it up, pull some tires off. You know, you can put it on jack stands, everything you need to do. It's just like it being on the floor, except literally being on a table. You know what I mean? It is literally that simple. There are better ways than what I'm about to do, of course but this is perfectly acceptable as well as long as you follow the same safety rules that i'm likely going to ignore One of the things that I'm going to be looking for today, and uh, we're going to see here pretty close, brake pads. The inner one is, is always the one that actuates first, touches the actual rotor first, so definitely want to keep an eye on that. Everything's pretty new and everything's still moving around, so everything's still good. Let's take a look at boots. Make sure I've got no rips, which are usually really obvious because it throws grease everywhere. These are looking solid. Taking a look at breathers. Make sure everything's actually still on. It's not loaded with water or something. All the different ball joints. So I've got a sway bar here. I've got bushings back here. Steering, everything's good there. Lower and upper, of course. So, I mean, everything is looking fairly solid. Make sure I've got no oil and debris. And oh yeah, I've got a little bit on that guy. I'm gonna have to open that up. But everything else is looking solid. I'm not seeing any oil leaks that I don't like. I'm gonna check the diff on the other side. It's all pretty standard stuff, I can tell you that just this little exercise right here has been amazing. I'm standing, I'm comfortable. Maybe I even get some pads for the concrete floor, hey? I'm getting soft in my old age. If you guys don't know, I'm an HD mechanic by trade. I also have some military time, so I definitely know what it's like to rough it. And I can tell you that I don't like it. So this is definitely an upgrade in my life. I'm gonna to get to greasing and I'm gonna go corner to corner, see if I see anything, you know what I mean? Get something done. She's not gonna know what to do with that much grease. I find one of the biggest lack, lacks in maintenance for these machines, especially for people who cross any water or traverse in any water, which let's be real, these machines do a lot of, they do not get enough grease. So it is always one of my biggest priorities to make sure she's got some grease because uh, no one one wants to hear all of that squeaking especially on video and no one wants to spend money on bushings all the time i was a little a little messy but we got her done so that's the front end a few other things you want to look at definitely are uh, are definitely like something like studs for example you know make sure that uh, like your ball joint on your tie rod end or make sure you're not like pulling out any threads i've seen it where we've been in heavy mud like ruts and when you're steering that power steering is actually working so hard that it can pull threads right out of the uh, the tie rod end so just little things like that stuff from from my experience having a look around and making sure that everything's checked out i already checked the diff diff looks great 
That oil's awesome. Make sure actuators on your winch work. That's a little crunchy. Might have to pull that apart. Clean that up. Holy moat, there we go. Got her. Yeah, I might have to pull that cap off and make sure all the crusties are out of there. Make sure everything works. Look for leaks, any rubbing, that kind of stuff. These are all pretty general rules for just about anything you're gonna pull up on your hoist. So I think it's time we, uh, we move to the back. You ever uh, work with like your license guy back when you were an apprentice and that person likely said something to you quite often that just sticks? Someone that I worked with would always say, what can you see? And I'd look around and I'd try to come up with something. And it turns out I couldn't see nothing because I didn't have a flashlight. And now every time I'm looking at something and I can't see, that line shows up in my head and I can't not hear it, you know? So what can you see? Nothing. Go get a flashlight. Apprentice things. You know what I mean? Everyone in the comments section during one of my last rides was wondering where my license plate was. And I did have it mounted, but nobody liked where it was. So I uh, went to go move it, realized I didn't have any more zip ties, and ended up just chucking it in my storage box. So figured I'd get that installed for you. Just got a get these zip ties just right, you know? And don't worry, there's four of them. It ain't going out anywhere. The one grease zerk that's really annoying on these is this U-joint to the rear diff on the prop shaft. But if you get it, just right. Make sure when you're putting your grease gun away to leave all the grease on it. That way, grease goes everywhere. It makes for a great time. When I'm checking my rear diffs, one of the best tools, in my opinion, is the right tool. And the right tool, well, that's up to you. But personally, I don't use the rounded ends for Allens. I do in some select spots, but these soft plugs, you're gonna ruin that pretty quick. So I make sure the fit is perfect. And I'm also a big fan of T-handles like this. So I just picked this particular one up. I had an older set, but these were red, and you know, I'm a sucker for red. So I got those. And uh, now we've got the plug out. Another bit of advice, when you're doing something like this, if you see these copper washers, they work harden over time, and you are supposed to replace them. So I have a kit, I always put a new one on, because this is something I do very often. I need this to work, so I have one less way for water to get into my diffs, so something to keep in mind. When this is done, I generally just check the level, which for these Can-Ams is a little bit below the actual sight line. A lot of people will fill it all the way to the top. You're not supposed to. There's actually a milliliter amount on the side of the casing that you'll see. But I usually just stick a zip tie in there. I grab some of the oil and I have a look at it and see how I feel. Because the only thing I'm really worried about other than my change intervals is to make sure water isn't in there. So if it's murky and milky, then well, you're gonna have to change it out and make sure you take a look at your seals and this specifically. So just an idea. Okay, next up, I'm gonna do some torque, 60 foot-pounds. Any of you guys with like 2018s and olders where it says uh, 72 foot-pounds? It's not, it's 60. They made some changes, I think it was 61, whatever it was. So a lot of people were over-torquing their studs and blowing them out, just a fun little tip. It is 60 foot-pounds. I just very gently put them in with the gun, and now I'm gonna go around with this. This 
So there you have it guys. We just did uh, a lot of the basic maintenance that I do all the time on my machines. So a lot of it is just making sure wheel ends are good, brakes are good, bearings aren't gonna fly off, bushings are still there, that kind of thing. So we went all the way around four corners, put tires back on, torqued them down. So the only thing left is I gotta check the air box and make sure I have coolant. But other than that, that's basically maintenance on a Renegade. This is something that you should definitely consider after a big ride, especially any ride that involves water. And uh, this thing, honestly, every time I turn it on, it's ones and zeros, it's very binary. It's like full pin all the time or it's sitting in the garage. So it has a pretty hard life. It's not, you know, your ranch ATV or something like that. So the intervals are pretty small. So a big shout out to the autoloft.ca for sponsoring today's video and getting us this hoist. It has been an absolute pleasure. Make sure to check out the links in the description, the autoloft.ca. They can get you a hoist anywhere in Canada. And if you're anywhere near like the Ottawa to Toronto, Windsor, that kind of area in the strip, then you can definitely get their installation services as well. So again, big shout out to the autoloft.ca. Without them, I wouldn't have this thing and it's fantastic and I can't wait to use it some more. So we'll see you guys next time. If you have any questions, leave them down below. See ya.